the most most listened to show on the internet. Welcome to AEG. I am your host, JB, and I have a very sick Dalton with me. <laughs> What's up? And I have Goose. Hey, everybody. And I have Marlon. Habitations. Yes, I have the fearsome foursome back this week. It sounds uh, like a, it, it sounds it's like a been, it, 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 it may be a porno. Uh, I, why? We why can turn you? it into one if we want. Oh. Oh, yeah. AEG porno coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Check your local YouTube listings. Oh, Lord. Maybe that'll be the name of this episode. God, yep. uh, Lord. Uh, and, and I thought it was bad when, when it comes yeah. to naming stuff. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, so anyway. Uh, so, uh, yep, we're back this week. I think this is the first episode of 2019 that we're all on. Yeah, we yeah. Gus and I missed last week because we're yeah. fucking scrubs. It's cool. Um, life, the TLC life... wouldn't want anything to do with us. <laughs> right, life intervenes, so I, I feel it. But um, this week we're gonna be doing a, I'd say relatively short. What you've been playing? Because I think most of us haven't really been playing anything. Um, and then we're actually gonna do an episode about Destiny. Yeah, I'm playing oh. an episode. Uh, it's do you want me, to, like, you want me to pull up the announcement, Jeff, or do you have a... Uh, I don't have the full details. If you would like to pull that up, Goose, that would be fantastic. I'm doing that right now. All right. Um, well, while you do that, can you talk a little bit about what you've been playing? Uh, I've been playing... Um, it's a pretty old game. It's uh, Metro uh, 2033 uh, Redux. Yeah, you! In, prep- in preparation for uh, Metro Exodus. I'm a small kid. Dalton's wife is making a special guest appearance on this episode. Apparently, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. hey, Dalton's wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Aaron. Hopefully Aaron's doing good right now. Yeah. I'm taking care of poor, sick Dalton right now. Yeah, she's, she's taking care of two sick people. She's making a big-ass crochet blanket right now. She's pretty proud of it. So. It's hey. fucking nice. I <laughs> 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 love this. That was awesome. Here. Beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, Goose, Metro 2033. Yeah, um, I've been playing it. I finished it uh, last week. Um, I'm basically trying to get the platinum trophy for it. I I will soon. It's just I've been like so lazy. I just have to uh, replay the game again on like some different difficulty and get the good ending because I screwed up big time because I wasn't able to get all the mortal points that I needed on my first run because I didn't oh. follow the guide. Right. Oh, oh, dude, I hate that. I that hate would, that. I would have been pissed at that. And then, and then the worst, the worst thing about it is like, it's not, it's not like, it's not like arbitrary. Like, hey, this is a bad point and this is a moral point. Like, the game in no way tells you, except for a visual and audio cue, that you don't know what it means. Gotcha. Right. That sucks. Which isn't that bad because I, I looked at, I looked at all the possible moral points, and it really isn't that difficult. It's just like, oh man, now I, you just I was, have to know every yeah. single one and what choices to make. I thought, I thought, and no, and that's the thing. There really isn't even like a choice. Like sometimes it's literally just standing next to an NPC and hearing them talk as opposed to walking away. Wow. How would you know that's a moral point? So it's that's, like really obscure. That's really specific. Yeah. That so, does suck. Like at least Uncharted, they had the optional conversations had like a triangle button and shit. Right. Like a triangle for the op- optional conversation. Yeah, like it would prompt you on and try to, but no, no such thing here. Except there's like one or two that you do get prompted, and, and it's just like to give an item to somebody, and if you give it to them, you will hear like the the screen will flash very subtly white, and you'll you'll get like an audio cue, which I didn't pick up my first time around. Um, but it, it's not a big deal. It's just that I was planning on just running right through my final playthrough. Now I can't do that. I have to take my time. Um, but I'll get it done sooner or later. Um, I actually have to get it done quick because I forgot that I'm in like in a race with like one of with one of my undergrad buddies. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah you need to get on it, man. I need to get on it. I need to get on. I'm kind of pulling for you in that one, dude. You but, need to get to. 50. Yeah, I don't want to lose a bet, Goose. I bet. I <laughs> yeah, bet on I, you, man. I but, yeah, so did I, and uh, Marlon bet against you because he said you were. I don't know. He doesn't have a lot of faith in you. Yeah, I think I think the words he used was a year a little bit. I think. Yeah. He said. No, no, Marlon, no, no, yeah. no. I Marlon didn't straight say up that. disrespect. I I didn't say it like that. All I said <laughs> was that his friend was gonna be a little bitch because he likes getting easy trophies. So he's yeah. Gonna, 
He probably so, played that Mayo game or some whatever shit. Yeah, he did. That, he, did yeah. he did. He did play. It. <laughs> Thankfully, it's like it's not part of the count. What's that? Like, there's a, there's another one that's that I saw was like super like ridiculous easy. I almost bought it, but I refrained. It was called like Mr. Masagi. Oh yeah, I've heard of that too, Mr. Masagi. It's like a it, thirty. Actually. It's yeah, it's like a thirty minute platinum. It's like yeah, some like easy. vampire dating game or some shit. Look, I have no problem with easy platinums. I mean, as long as it's like a decent game, you know what right. I mean? Like, look, I haven't seen the entire list of what he has, but if he has Barbie's World somewhere out in that <laughs> fucking place, I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry that I lose any respect that you have if you're a trophy <laughs> hunter and you have Barbie in your fucking trophy list. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, that least, is like the majority of my trophies are all games that I actually enjoyed oh, playing through. He uh he yeah. actually he's a, he's a, he's up actually one zip he he got uh, the Spyro uh the first Spyro game oh yeah that's back in, yeah that's back tough, in December those 4th. games are not not super long and they're relatively easy platinums I'm just surprised yeah. that he hasn't really taken off because I figured he was just gonna like take off I figured I'd be down like five by now right because uh, we we te- he technically started on the fourth because uh he got the platinum on he got the Spyro one on the fourth. And I'm like, dude, I thought we were going to just start at the beginning of the year, January 1st. He's like, no, we're going to start now. I'm like, that's a bullshit move, but all right, it's fine. You can you can have that one because I'm still going to beat your ass. Right. Like, I was yeah, because like, yeah, Dal- Dalton <laughs> I and I I wish I would have ended this race. I've got like eight since then. Right, yeah. Dalton <laughs> and I are uh, like it's this year. Oh, no, you've gotten more this year, I think, now. No, I've only got four Okay. This year. Yeah, that's where I'm actually at as well. Um, Wait. oh, I got another platinum this week. Oh yeah, I think I saw it. Something like burly men or something. No, that was oh. me. I got burly men. Oh. I try. I tried doing that one. I do not like how that game controls. So I. Oh, it's a fun game. I like it. It's actually a pretty good little indie title, and it was free on PSN. So right. I, was like... I just don't like how it controls. How you have to use like the right stick to pull across the map, and I it just. Use R two. It's easier. Oh well, what the fuck. Yeah. Anyway, I can always re-download that. And keep anyway, Gus is going for the Platinum and Metro. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, Last I um, looked, you were at like 90% on that or something like that. You're pretty up there. Yeah, it's it's literally just two trophies. It's beat the game on a certain difficulty. I don't know if it's the hardest one. I don't necessarily think it's the harder. It's just like more tanky controls. Yeah. Um, And then it's just get the good ending. I just got to get on it. I've just been lazy. Isn't that yeah. Um, All right, throw it out. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm still doing my nightly routine, going upstairs now. So. No, you're, you're good, good, bro. You're no good. worries, man. You're good. I'm getting no out of the way so my wife can do the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Goose, is that all you've been playing this week, man? Yeah, it it it, it controls fine. I like it. Uh, I love the atmosphere. You're underground. Uh, have you actually what the story's about? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't really know either. Russia. Um, I'll say this though. The gameplay like, is what draws me to those games, though. Yeah, man. There, like towards the end, there was this one mission where I, I, obviously I was underground, and like this is the most memorable memorable thing about the game. Like it really felt like a survival game in that sense. Where so when you're in certain aspects of the underground or even outside, there's like radiation heavy, or, or there's like noxious gases. You can get sick. You can die really easy if you don't have a gas mask. But your gas mask is dependent on you having um, air canisters. So at the end of this long sequence, I got to take with this other character. I have to take a uh, elevator downstairs to then go up again. And it's all just gas. It's all gas. And I have like 40 seconds left of uh, air. And I'm, I kept dying because I wasn't able to make it in time. So I had to literally sort of like cheat the system where I would... Put the mask on. Take the mask off. Put the mask on. Take <laughs> the mask off. Put so the like mask, the animation was long enough to where you breathing. were gonna die, basically. Yep. To basically That's ridiculous. To keep breathing. And as soon as I went down, I sort of cheated it. I, I basically sort of cheated it because there was a whole bunch of enemies, but I ran right past every single enemy. As soon as I hit the ladder, or the yeah, the ladder. As soon as I hit that ladder, I just went all the way upstairs. And thankfully, there were two more gas canisters. And I was like, or air canisters. I was like, oh man, that was that was like probably the most tense I had, the most tense feeling I had in the entire game. That was pretty yeah, fun. That game, that game, from what I remember, does a good job with atmosphere and tension and, you know, actual like feelings of survival. 
It's it's solid. I'm I'm looking forward to playing. Um, because you told me that Last Light was even was better. Well, I like yeah. In terms of how it plays and and how it runs and the actually even the story is better in my opinion. So I'm like yeah. Much I more def- Bioshocky feel with Bio- Last Light. Huh. That's so. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm su- I'm super excited for Exodus. I it don't know if I'm gonna buy it on day one. But. I, I'll be honest. Um, with Anthem coming out a week after, it's going to be really difficult to. Yeah, that's my issue with it. With yeah. that. I, 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 I don't know yet, but I, I'm leaning towards like I'm, I think Resident Evil isn't going to be a day one purchase. I'm a hold off. Yeah. But I think Metro may be a day one. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, Met- Anthem's going to like I'm super excited for Anthem, and I'm going to play the living hell out of it, and it's day one already, like guaranteed. But my thing with anthem is it's going to be something i'm going to mostly play with you guys or with other people yeah it's, it's a team whereas game metro sure. if you guys are like eh, i'm not really feeling anthem tonight. i don't feel like playing like metro i can pop in and have my own kind of night to myself and play that true so i don't know I can, i've been of... watching a lot of trailers and i don't know i just think i think i will cave on that one i may be wrong yeah. i may be like you know what no i won't do it but i think i'll cave I have yeah, a pre-order. That's kind of how I'm feeling too, guys. <laughs> it's, it's... So far, the only two games I've got pre-ordered are uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Anthem. Those are the that's, only... that's where I'm at too right yep, now. Same. Those are the yeah. only two I've pre-ordered those for. I'm going to have to go and pre-order uh, Unknown Skies because I just what? read something that, that just made me go like, yeah, yeah, I need to pre-order this game and I need to pre-order it now. Uh, apparently, Bando, uh, Ace Comeback 7, uh, oh. uh, Unknown Skies, because apparently the pre-order has uh, Ace Comeback 5, The Young Song War, which is, like, my favorite of the bunch. That's so, cool. uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go. Well, you better do that in... soon, man. Doesn't it come out, like, the end of this month? It, no, it comes out in four days. Okay, yeah, you so should gotta... pre-order that. <laughs> I got to go do that now. But yeah, quickly. You gotta do it quickly. I gotta do it quickly because <laughs> I I really want to play uh, on Song War. It's not a remaster. It's just basically like a port that you can play natively on your PS4. I mean, it's still cool. But but to have that platinum trophy sitting on my list, that that that's the best. Yeah. That will be the Go best for it, right man. now. It so, won't you won't get it because you don't get platinums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's not talk about that. To be fair to Marlin. To be fair to Marlon, he has some of the. Oh, actually, you know what? I was gonna give you props, but then I realized like the the uh, the completion rates for those platinums are pretty fucking high. Yeah. But yeah. but I think they cater to the hardcore of the hardcore, which is why it's so high. It's like a challenge to those folks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like. But... Honestly, I think Destiny One's platinum is one of my favorite platinums, just because of that flawless radio trophy. Yeah, that's right. that's yeah. Destiny One, it's one of my favorite platinums. I agree. Yep. I, I I can't wait for you guys to get that Destiny Two platinum. Yeah. Uh, oh, dude. Wait. I know. I know. I know. My method was the cheap method in terms of you guys, but I'm so no, no, glad no. I got I, it. And I don't have to do that. Nothing. <laughs> like I, that's. I, I, it's not hey, a cheap method. It, it, hey, it, it was if, the method. It's just if Bungie put it there, it put it there for a reason. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, and then they, they, they regretted it and took it away. <laughs> that's their problem. That's, that's it my lord. Sucks it sucks that they it, did it that. Went though, to by. Be I'll tell yeah. you this. The one thing that pisses me. I think off, it'll be more satisfying for you guys though than it was for me. But I was just happy that I was able to get it and then put Destiny Two down. I'll, 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 be, I'll be honest. I think you're absolutely right. It will be more satisfying because, oh my God, we have it. It's a pain. It's just a pain. But it's it's like like one of our friends like apologized because like he thought he was being mean. He wasn't being mean at all. He was just like super upset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's just I don't know. It... Look, all I know is that Justin saved himself from a, a real fucking lash out of because I was gonna have it. I was gonna give it to him like right there when that happened. <laughs> but like my parents and, 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 and my family members were behind me. I was like, nope. I just wanna say down. we're still in we're still in the what you've been playing section. These guys were uh oh, attempting oh. the prestige raid for anyone oh. listening. Dude, that yeah. talent is a pain in the yeah. ass. It's so, it the thing that pisses me off the most about that specific raid is that I hate that raid. I won't lie no, to you. No, it's 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 not that. It's like I'm doing Crota all over again, or I'm doing Oryx all over again, where it's just I'm not fighting the boss. I'm fighting the mechanics to yeah. get to the boss. 
and yeah, but at least Oryx. I don't know. I thought Oryx and Crota and Vault of Glass. Honestly, Vault of Glass and the Oryx raid were the pinnacle of raids. I obviously haven't played these two newest ones, but did you did you play Oryx? Yes, Oryx was my favorite. Oh yeah, Oryx and Vault of Glass. Yeah, those two. Yep, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm right I don't you. like this raid that you guys are doing. I didn't like it from day one. I have beaten it. I just don't like it. I, I it's it's really mechanic heavy. Just going back real quick, like one like something that Andrew said uh, when we were fucking, we were there like for six hours maybe. Before hey, hey, hey. The, <laughs> the baby's like, I'll have me, I put on this raid right now. It is. <laughs> That's my nine and a half month old son. He fucking hates Destiny apparently. <laughs> <laughs> The child has spoken. <laughs> oh, one, of, one of the things that Andrew said, and he was totally right, because at one point I messed up with a sequence where I'm supposed to focus on my target and somebody else's target came through my crosshairs and I killed them. Therefore, I missed mine and screwed everything up. And he was like, dude, you have to trust the guy next to you. Yeah. That's your job. You focus on your shit and, you make, and, and don't worry about him. Trust him that he will come through. And I was like, all right, fair enough. I fucked up. Sorry. And that's really yeah, it's, it's just trusting the guy next to you. Thing, bro. It's hard. Yeah, it it's, is, man. It's 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 difficult. Especially when you got Mar especially when that next guy is Marlin. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. God. You don't want to trust Marlin for sure. He's it it's funny, to be honest with you. They were <laughs> we were stuck on that um shadow round for Callus for like six hours, I think. Uh seven. Between mm -hmm. We were there close to six hours, based on between Saturday and Sunday was how, how many hours? I think. Oh, more more than more than twelve hours. Yeah, we were just stuck there for the longest time because for some reason it it was always the little things that always screwed us over. It was always uh, a scion that we didn't kill in time, a psionic uh, ghost that we didn't kill in time, uh, a little rock that we hit that bumped us over and when we died, it, it was so. We, we, we got in a groove where we would just die right away, yeah. and then we finally got in a really good groove with it. We mixed up the teams. I had to swallow my pride because one of the guys, Joe, I know he was upset with me because I was I just wasn't doing my job. And he was like, hey, how about we switch you out? I'm like, it's going to be a cold day in hell before that happens. And then I just gave in because I'm like, all right, I need to compromise. I'm not doing what I need to do. So we switched. We had a you know a different team going in, and it, and it really worked. We started getting towards the end of it, and then once we got towards that end – the, the one time that we got at the end of it or close to it, the other team on the outside in the throne room got caught with God, their hands uh, with their pants down. <laughs> and they dude, got I was oh. I was so mad at that time because we were so struggling to get to uh in front of Callus where you're supposed to kill all the go all the skulls to be able to uh, increase your DPS yeah, modifier so we begin yeah. able to kill it afterwards. And we're like, We made it! Guys, guys, we made it to the skulls. All right, let's do this. Get ready, get ready. And then I just hear, like, Justin and Lee going, Lee, help me! I died! Oh, you died too! Fuck! Justin, <laughs> di Justin died. He got revived, so we're like, all right, we're right back into it. Not even three seconds later, he died again. I'm like, oh, man. And then once <laughs> Lee went down, we were like, oh, it's over. It's over. Oh, yeah. But speaking of, speaking of which, we've got another topic to discover concern, uh, concerning yeah. Destiny. Oh yeah. The fucking mechanics of the raid, but <laughs> now that you have, yeah. you have to worry about a certain <laughs> publisher fucking with Real your shit, you can actually fix your shit. <laughs> Real quick though, Jeff, what what have you been playing, man? Um, real quick, um, I finally played Tacoma. Oh, oh I want to hear this. I really liked that game. Um, it wasn't what I was expecting. You know, the way you described it, Goose, I was not... I don't know what I was expecting, to it's be honest with it's, you. It's all character-driven. It's, it's all it, it is. It is very character-driven. Yeah, it's 100% like, narrative. It's... It was, yeah, it was kind of difficult. Um, I was playing it with a house full of people. So I, at one point, like, part of the way through, like, the first thing, I'm like, oh, okay, I actually have to pay attention to this. So I put my headphones on and kind of, like, closed myself off. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then I had I, – I did have a trophy guide because there were a couple things that I knew I was going to miss. So I did platinum that. So that's number 11 for me Nice. overall. Dude. That's number Congrats. four for 2019. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. So – and um, 
I did try to play some other stuff to try to platinum. I like I was saying a little bit ago, like I did try to play that Burly Men at Sea. Not really my cup of tea. I don't think I might try to give it another shot later, but right now I was just kind of not in the headspace for it. Um, and then I picked up this game because I thought that it had a platinum trophy, but it did not. So I 100%ed it, but <laughs> which game was I did not one? get a platinum for it, which is called North. North. It's a little yeah. indie game. I mean, Jeff not doing research before he buys. No, stuff. yeah, it it only took me 15 <laughs> minutes to get the 100% trophies for it. So, right. Really, I didn't waste a lot of time or money. Right. But, um, but you bought it thinking it had it had a platinum. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. I thought. Oh, man, I like, he's gone off the fucking deep end, man. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, this guy's gonna start buying these fucking all these like obscure yeah, titles. He'll, yeah. fucking... he'll he'll buy me you the deluxe edition and be like no. The, uh, you'll I'm only, I'm only going, with stuff, only going with stuff that I actually. I'm only going with stuff that I actually want to play. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's gonna be at 75 trophies by the end of this year. Platinums. Uh, he's gonna yeah or yeah you know what I mean. Yeah. He's gonna start, he's gonna start playing those uh those Japanese um my God those novels those like uh, animated no. novels which are super platinum <laughs> trophy like trophy hordes love those games because they're easy and they they have like quick platinum they're like a whole small cottage industry. Well, I am I am working just, uh, on. I am working on, uh, I never got the platinum for the first two seasons of the Walking Dead Telltale games. Oh, yeah, no, those are good, those are good games, though. Yeah, so I re-downloaded those. I never got the platinum for Life is Strange, as much as I love that game, and I never got the platinum for Tales from the Borderlands, so I downloaded well, all that stuff, and I'm gonna play Jeff. all that. I'm actually currently in the other room, I have it on the pause screen, I'm working on the current, the final season of The Walking Dead, because that one is not just, hey, play through the game, you get the platinum. There are actually, like, there's work that you need to do, and you have to, like, make duplicate saves and reload and d make other choices to get all the trophies. So I'm currently working on that. In the which was that one? The final season of The Walking Dead. The, oh, okay. The current one, that they're, which the new the third episode actually releases tomorrow. Yeah. So, but I'm gonna probably wait till they do a trophy guide for that before I actually play it, so that way I can I don't have to do as many playthroughs as I'm having to do now. Yeah, it's smarter that way. Like once you get through, the, once you once you finish the game and like you know the story and stuff, you could just you could just use a guide as much. It's yeah, it's just more I mean, efficient that way. Right, and a lot of the trophies, like I said, it's it's you. There are multiple versions of the same decision, so you have to basically create. You can create like duplicate save files, and actually like be like okay. This is the junction where I need to, it'll go one way or the other, so I'll make a save file right here, so that way I can do this decision, then reload, okay. and then do the other decision, so I get both trophies. That, gotcha. that yeah. and collectibles are, like, my least favorite two types of trophies. Like, yeah. Those yeah are this one has, the, the, the okay. current Walking Dead season has both of them. I'm not going to lie, collectibles suck. But the reloading, like I, yeah. I have like a mini, I have a mini USB drive, and I did it with Vampire, where there was this one trophy. Like I would have needed a whole playthrough. It kind of yeah. sucks because you have to plan, and right. it, it can sometimes take away from the experience of playing the game. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, but if if it is more, you, you save a lot of time. It is very you do. Yeah. It, yep. But, so that's but the unfortunate thing game? with with certain certain games like that you have to do those a lot of times you can't skip things so that's where it makes it time consuming actually real quick before we, we before we jump off this topic yeah um regarding trophies i i don't think i'll ever do it but uh wolfenstein the new colossus wolfenstein 2 the new colossus has this one trophy which really was a troll to uh players of the first two games because um machine games had a glitch where they were so in order to get the platinum for those two for those two games is this the what you were talking the about play, in the chat that one day um probably I, no i think you was talking about the difficulty glitch trophy yeah 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 there's a there's a glitch in those two games in, the, in their first two games the new blood and and, and and the old blood and the new order where instead of having to beat the entire game on the hardest difficulty which is brutal um, you can just literally, if if you have a physical version, you can install it without the patch, and all you need to do is beat the hardest. Last chapter. Uh, sorry, the last chapter on the hardest difficulty. I did not do this because I was an idiot, so I had to bang my head countless <laughs> times in rage. I wish I had known this. So, for example, like when I go back to do the old blood, I won't I won't do that. I'll just delete it and install it. But with the new one, 
to fucking mess with players, they have this difficulty called Mein Leben, which I think it's like my life in German. Yeah. And you need to beat the game in one sitting. You in the in the hardest difficulty, which is harder than the hardest one in the prior games. Yeah. Yeah. And you have no saves. It's a one life. Yep. Jesus Christ. And I'll, it's I'll, like no no one rarely ha- no one has it. It's like zero point one percent. Like. Um, if you look at that and and the platinum trophy, that's what stops everybody from getting that trophy. But uh, I've been watching these past couple of days, these past three days, I have been watching runs on YouTube on how to do it. And these runs are making me think that maybe I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, it's, it's just uh, 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 buy a couple delusion. controllers. <laughs> yeah, you might need to buy a couple extra controllers. On I'm that being one. delusional. I'm being delusional. But the way these guys, they make it look so easy. Because they know they know where the enemies are at. This guy, this one guy was like, "Oh, I beat this game like 23 times. It took me 23 times to know all the AI routines. I know them by heart." And I'm like, "I don't have to know that shit. I just need to follow your video." <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. Oh, yeah. I, I think I think that's. Um, I'll give you a bit of a story because you guys were making fun of me for like the uh, Titanfall uh, uh, because of the Master Trophy. That's yeah. basically what happened to me. I went online and I checked that the best strategy of how to do it you know and when i saw the runs in the videos and this was happening at two three o'clock in the morning because i'm trying to do this like first day that that was my goal to get this trophy first day it would be the absolute hardest one to get exactly so for me if i get this now then everything else in the game is easy you know n- nothing can compare to this so i was looking at videos and at the same time that i'm talking with, with gustavo like this in the morning in the morning and I'm like, I can do it. I, if I follow this guy, it looks very easy. <laughs> Looking at a video and then actually imploding the same skills into the game. Yeah, about that. Uh... <laughs> yeah. It's a whole different um, ball game. It's a whole different ball game. Like, yeah, dude. Whole, it's it's watching a whole different game. Ball. <laughs> it, it was, and he still makes fun of me because I was able to recreate the speed that he does. But I was not able to recreate the skills that he had. <laughs> like, bro, that is the most sloppiest video I have seen in my entire <laughs> life. And I don't know how the fuck you got that trophy. And it still pisses me off to this day. <laughs> I guess while we're still so, on the, the topic of trophies, um, I played the Crew 2 and platinumed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. That's right. <laughs> it, 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 was, it, was like a, it was like a love-hate relationship. Did you were so uh, I think it was all hate, honestly. It was just hate. The game like, sucks. I helped, I helped Dalton get the two multiplayer trophies that he needed. Man, he was mad at that game. <laughs> I'm like, Dalton, there's got to be some redeeming quality. And his answer was like, uh, the scenery's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game was complete garbage, man. Like, but How big was the driving the world? The world is huge. It's probably one of the, big, it's one of the biggest maps I've seen in any game. Right. Um, one of the trophies was like this hyper car race where you drive from uh, New York to Los Angeles. It's like it takes like forty five minutes in a hyper car. I mean that's one of the fucking you know like one of the Koenigsegg or the McLaren P ones and shit. Fast. So those are like the fast cars. That's but the game cool. itself was trash. Like the driving was garbage. The fucking races were infuriating. I I just I hated it and I'll never play that game again. You uninstalled it as soon as you finished, I bet. I did, I did. It's yeah. actually already, literally as soon as that platinum popped. I didn't even close the application. I just like pushed the start button on it and then just deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically what I've been playing. Um, yeah, got the platinum and move the fuck on. All right. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. So Destiny Two. <laughs> You could have yeah, transitioned we... from that, Knucklehead. You could have just done something good about it, but not like Oh, wow, fuck, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, you want to wanna, uh, say the yeah, news? Yeah, Goose, uh, Goose, so there was, some, there was some monumental, I would say, news. Big, big. Huge. Some pretty damn big news about Destiny 2, this, or Destiny and Bungie uh, this week. Uh, Goose, go ahead and give the, the lowdown on that. You want me to read? You want me to read the uh, yeah. the presser art? Right. Um. So, 
on the 10th of January, uh, the Destiny Dev Team put out uh, the following. It's titled Our Destiny. Uh, when we first launched our partnership with Activision in 2010, the gaming industry was in a pretty different place. As an independent studio setting out to build a brand new experience, we wanted a partner willing to take a big leap of faith with, with us. We had a vision for Destiny that we believed in, but to launch a game of that magnitude, we needed the support of an established publishing partner. With Activision, we created something special. To date, Destiny has delivered a combination of over 50 million games and expansions to players all around the world. More importantly, we've also witnessed a remarkable community, tens of millions of Guardians strong, rise up and embrace Destiny to play together, to make and share memories, and even to do truly great things that reach far beyond the game we share to deliver a positive impact on people's everyday lives. Uh, we have enjoyed a successful eight-year run and would like to thank Activision for their partnership on Destiny. Looking ahead, we're excited to announce plans for Activision to transfer publishing rights for Destiny to Bungie. With our remarkable Destiny community, we are ready to, to publish on our own, while Activision will increase their focus on owned IP projects. That's a very important thing, fellas. Keep that in mind. Yep. The planned transition process is already underway in its early stages, with Bungie and Activision both committed to making sure the handoff is as seamless as possible. With Forsaken, we've learned and listened and learned into what we believe our players want from a great Destiny experience. Rest assured, there is more of that on the way. We'll continue to deliver on the existing Destiny roadmap, keep that in mind as well, and we're looking forward to releasing more seasonal experience in the coming months, as well as surprising our community with some exciting announcements about what lies beyond. Thank you so much for your continued support. Our success is owed in no small part to the incredible, incredible community of players who have graced our world with light and life. We know self-publishing won't be easy, there's still much for us to learn as we grow as an independent global studio, but we see unbounded opportunities and potential in Destiny. We know that new adventures await us all on new worlds filled with mystery, adventure, and hope. We'll hope you'll join us you'll join us there. See you, Starside Bungie. Oh yeah. That's that was a bombshell when that dropped. I was at work. Huge. It's big. It's big. It's it. You know, I joke around saying big, but it's 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 pretty big. It's it's. it's, yeah. it's I'll tell you, I'll tell you if this. If you if you really like, it doesn't seem like that big. Like, oh, okay, Destiny's taking over their own thing. But if you really sit down and think about it, the ramifications of the going ramifications for the game and the industry are insane. I think, like, the first thing I said when I was reading it was, like, keep in mind to what they said about their focus on IP projects, and I took that as a dig at Activision. Where they're like, yeah, you're not probably focusing on us as much as you're focusing on the stuff that you actually own, like COD, exactly, like COD, exactly, and uh, the stuff that you know, Overwatch and things like that. Yeah. Um, but this is big because when I when I first read this, the first thing I thought about was like, are they going to self-publish? And they, well, I didn't read this when I first saw the, the tweet at work, um, but they are going to self-publish, and that sort of worries me a little bit because. Publishing games and developing games is very expensive, especially here in North America, especially where they're located up in up in Seattle, and I think they got some offices in in in, uh, in California, which is cost of living in those places is super high. Um, but making games is really expensive, and Activision gave them the funds to not only make the game, but also provided uh, public relations and marketing. And had, they had a pipeline yeah. in place to make this game successful. And I don't know whether Bungie has the capability or the experience or the money to do what Activision did. Yeah. Um, well, we know Bungie doesn't have Activision money, that's for sure. Like, that's... But, but they, they also know, don't have to worry about Activision's meddling with their set of IPs, which is... I think they're going to have to find investors, obviously. Um, and I'm glad you let you mention that because speaking of which, a couple of months, a couple of months back actually, back in 2018, there was a story that came out where this uh, Chinese gaming company NetEase, which uh, focuses actually on mobile games over in China, um, they invested 100 million dollars, 100 million dollars in Bungie. And furthermore, so, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I actually do too. Which is, it, I don't know what, like, people were, like, I remember that was, like, a big thing. People was like, oh, wow, what does this mean for Bungie? $100 million from a company other than Activision. What does that mean? People right away were thinking, oh, they're going to make a mobile Destiny game. We oh, don't know God. that. <laughs> yeah. Especially especially because NetEase focuses on mobile mobile games over in China, which and is really hard. Especially, I think that's when Fortnite Mobile was starting to kind of blow up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Around that time, Fortnite and PUBG Mobile. Yep. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, though. If Bungie can... 
get their by becoming a global you know game developer they don't have to worry about just creating games for you know for the west side of the world that means that like look at this let, let me give you a bit of an example so right now in right now in destiny 2 in korea they have a, a npc that gives um exotics by spending real life money in the game um and in korea and in and in korea just, yeah it, that's okay no problem with that because you know, if Bungie that can get into that market without having to worry about activision then... yeah see that's where that's where i'm that's where i'm at mindset wise on it like this gives Bungie really an opportunity to spread its wings and make destiny something that is their own make they destiny do not very, have but... to answer to all of activision's bullshit anymore I, th I think that's what i think that's probably one of the driving wedges between them i think there was probably this friction and kudos to activision again i know everybody wants to make them like the evil company the but kudos, yeah this, the bad guy but, but, but kudos to them because they could have totally been like fuck you we're keeping the ip we funded right. it we paid for it you developed it sure but we've up, we fronted up the money we're keeping that ip well i mean you think about yeah, it I like think legally, yeah. they could but the thing to. is that, yep. right. the reason, but the reason I would that wouldn't work with them is because the minute that Bungie got into Activision, that was the first thing that Bungie said: "We'll get into a partnership with you, but we are gonna keep the IP no matter yeah, they'll what." They'll retain happens. all the rights. Yeah, that's, that's probably that was probably was in the contract. Like, hey, I like, guarantee you, it was that, because that's what happened with yeah. Bungie and Microsoft. With Bungie, could not retain the rights for Halo because when they created the the, the Halo franchise. Microsoft, Microsoft was play. like, no, yeah. we retain the rights. So, because right, they, they signed they that contract, they they lost to a bigger company, basically. Exactly. And that would have happened again too, had they not. I'm sure, like like you guys said, I'm sure it was in the contract. It had to have been. Yeah, they didn't want to make the same mistake twice. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and but no, when, my, when they signed my the deal thing... way back when, they did say, hey, this is a publishing deal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my my biggest thing is, like I said, this this gives Bungie. Uh, you know, they don't have to worry about the formula that they were going down with these annual releases and an actual set schedule. They have time now, not a lot, but enough of a breathing room to actually develop things that fans want as opposed to this big conglomerate basically breathing down their neck saying like, we profit, 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 we want to see these numbers go up. Which, you know, they had even said last year, like, Forsaken did not perform as well as Activision wanted it to. And I think yep. that was kind of the start of this, this, like you said, Goose, this wedge that was being driven. And I think that a lot of it had to do with, with Activision wanting to see these numbers go up and Bungie not performing. Not that the game is not doing well, not that the, not the Forsaken was bad. But it in relation the best to the part other of... properties, like COD right. and yeah. things like that, yeah. yeah. Right. But the thing you is know, this, though, is like... For example, and, and the thing that just gets to me, you know, is that now that Bungie doesn't have to deal with Activision anymore and they can just become their own self-publishing, you know, game developers, whatever happens now, it is on their ter terms. That whatever is also now, true. Whatever yes, they, they, they fucked up, that they is have the op Yes, they have they, the opportunity, it, but they're going to be taking all the risk. So I, they, yeah. yeah. If, like, for example, like a lot of the things that we keep saying about this, Destiny 2, like uh, at the beginning of the when it first came out, we said, "Oh, all this is like Activision's hand on this, you know, you know this is yep. ruining." Yeah, we've been saying that for over four years. So now. now is it's on Bungie. I mean, the ball is on their court. You know, they can either make this game really great again and make it so that everybody enjoys it, or they can really fuck that up. And the thing and is, I don't it, even know if it's going to go fully on Bungie until the next the next title comes out either. Because I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guess, like, actually, that I don't that was say it's lost cause because they it has gotten better since since launch. Know, obviously, that was but... gonna be that was gonna be my my actual major question for you guys. Do you think? Because I in my mind I feel like the whole like Destiny three and the numbered releases and all the the schedule of release had a lot to do with act or with Activision, not. I mean, I'm not saying that you know Bungie did not have. I mean, they're the they're that the, was contract the contract. Creator. That was the contract. I mean, they yep. they had a contract for four games, and in between those games, uh, there was supposed to be every DLC year to DLC 
yeah. Clima climaxed by a Forsaken type expansion. Right. That fell through when they weren't able to deliver Destiny right. 2 on time. It was supposed to come out, I think, in 2016 as opposed to 17. So yeah, that right. deal, so they had to renegotiate. They had to uh, renegotiate that deal. Right. And that was probably something Activision didn't like. Like, hey, listen, we're contingent on you hitting these numbers every two years yeah. and getting this stuff out every two years. And clearly, you're not able to do that. I mean, they had to contract High Moon Studios and uh, Vicarious Visions to help them out yeah. with Destiny 2, and that still didn't pan out. That's right. I forgot about that. But so, no, so do you think, so my big pie in the sky, like future, like not anytime probably soon, but do you think that Bungie has the ability to do a, to essentially turn Destiny as opposed to numbered releases into a World of Warcraft style Platform. That's what I wanted from the beginning. Honestly, I I wish they would have. Well, I, I legitimately Warcraft thought that's what Destiny this, actually, was going to be. I believe Destiny three will come out, but not this year. Um, well, no, I I, I don't yeah. think it's going to be this I, year at all. I think we're gonna get some type of expansion in the fall after these these annual pass releases, and then. But do you think it's going to be called Destiny three, or do you think I it's just gonna be Destiny colon whatever, and it's just a platform that you. You know, I'm, I'm actually glad you mentioned this because literally Forbes literally wrote an article about this. I think it was yesterday yeah. or, or today or yesterday. I read that. I read that article. That's what kind of spurred this conversation. I'll be perfectly honest they, with you. They uh, they totally put that out there, and I don't know. See, because I'm thinking it from the publishing side. I'm like, how are they going to publish? Like, I'll give you an example. How like, are they going to pull that off? How are they going to pull that off? Like, and then I'm also thinking, are they going to are they going to use Steam because they said Destiny Two was going to stay on Battle.net, but you know, if you Steam, that's thirty percent off. Will they be? and go with Epic, where they only take like a 12% cut of the game, right? Okay. The Division 2 is launching, launching solely on Epic when it comes to Yeah, I to saw PC. that. That's pretty huge so, news in and of so, itself. So these are different opportunities for them, but I think of CD Projekt Red. They're an independent studio. They're nowhere as big as uh, Bungie, but they're, they're pretty big. I mean, I think it's over 500 developers over over in War Warsaw in Poland. And, yes. but, and, and even then, and you have to take into account that in Poland... Uh, in relation to the United States, cost of cost of living is super low, right? This is why they're able to have all these people um, making these games okay. and, char yep. and charge twenty bucks for that expansion that they did, which was like crazy amounts of hours. But the point I mentioned was, all the free DLC they dropped, all, all the free DLC, exactly the twenty free DLCs that they dropped. But the point I'm trying to make with Sweetie Project Red was they didn't have the capacity to publish on their own. They needed a, they needed a partner in Warner Brothers in North America. And they needed Square Enix out in Japan. Square Enix published um, The Witcher 3 out in Japan. So I look yep. at Bungie, which it, like their their expenses will be tenfold that of CD Projekt Red. And I'm like, who are you? Are you really going to self-publish? If you do, will that deter the quality of the game? And, go, and, and again, um, go, going back to what Jeff was saying, I, I agree with Dalton that Destiny 3 will come out. It'll be a packaged $60 game. But again, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Making games cost money. The reason a that Activision, a lot of money. The reason that Activision was on their back was because, okay, listen, we are investing money, and we don't see a return on our investment, right? Right. You need to see that. So again, it's a great, it's a, it's twofold. It's a great thing that Bungie has their independence, and now Activision won't be meddling as much as they did, or we don't know, but we assume that they've meddled quite a bit. Eververse, we assume, came out of Activision, right? Oh, absolutely. So what does that mean for the game going forward? I personally would love to see Destiny 3 come out. And like that Forbes article said, I would love to see a world of Destiny where it's just – it's not a game. It's a, it's a platform. But but how do you capitalize on that and make money? Because during those – because the, um, we all I know how – I go to a subscription. I I would I would I, I would like to see that, but I wouldn't like to see that because think about it. The game has has values. It has highs and lows. During those yeah. lows, they're not going to be making any money. During those highs, they'll be making some money. But with a, with, but, a, with a subscription, they will have a constant stream of money coming in. Absolutely, and the the hardcores they play that game all the time. I I don't know how. Even when they run out of shit, to, it's same with World of Warcraft. <laughs> even when they run out that's, of shit, that's like, more like still play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it, they're still going to have the income. I bet. That's what I'm thinking. I bet they go to – I've been thinking this since the split happened. I bet they go to a subscription base for the next game. Obviously, it's not going to happen anytime soon. They'll most likely release the next game without a subscription. 
But then I'll tell you this. Uh, actually, I don't know if they'll be able to do that either because I think if they release it without a subscription and then start demanding a subscription, people are going to be pissed. So I think they'll have to. Yeah, I think they'll have to launch with a subscription. On the Don, next how, game. how do you think that'll play out with the console players? Like PC players are used to having to pay monthly. Yeah. Right? But us console players part. are not used to that. How do you think that'll play out? I think they'll do it like they did it with Elder Scrolls. Um, uh, they'll uh, kind of similar, but Elder Scrolls has Where a free Where you can pay but... if you want to, and you get a bunch of bonus stuff for paying. Yes, and uh, like if you don't pay, you have to buy all the the expansions and all the you know all the extra shit. But I think that I'm almost thinking it'll be like a mandatory subscription based. But I'm thinking like I think that Destiny does have like. I mean, say what you want about this last year, but the, they still have had their solid, you know, core, hardcore community. Like, a lot of people never left. Yeah. yeah, the player count dipped. A lot of the casuals left. But a lot of the people still played. They still had a relatively decent player count all the time. Like, it was never hard to find activities or anything, even during the lows. So I believe that they have a strong enough player base that they could do it. Especially, you know what I mean. If it's Bungie, and they they do right by their their, you know what I mean. They do put it right by their community. Yeah, they'll they'll have no problem with it. So here's my thing for for since we're talking about other build Destiny three. There's a couple of things that hopefully I would love to see in the next game. Now that Activision is out of the picture and Bungie can just worry about world building and just stuff like that. I don't know if Bungie will ever hear this. I don't know if they will ever listen to this uh, uh, suggestion. Oh, absolutely. You have to have faith, man. Yeah. But think about it like this, because I'm pretty sure Dado has said it. I'm pretty sure Five has said it. You know, but set bonuses for having a complete set of armor. Okay. You need that. Please. If I'm busting my ass to get the complete set of Crucible gear for the complete set for Vanguard gear, the complete set for the raid, I want to have a specific bonus that helps me for those things, you know? I think uh, you should have customizable gear, too. Like, if you like the um, way a set of gear looks, I think you should be able to. Transform Navigation, please. We've been asking that yeah. for, like, forever. Uh, yeah. If we're going to go on a subscription base, then make that every gear is viable, okay? Yep. Make it so that not just gear from, like, the first raid uh, stays there. No, make it so that it, it can go all the way they to, to the they, top. They, they, they te technically, it's, it's hard to do those type of things. I mean, World of Warcraft is a great example. It's like a 10-plus-year-old game. I may be wrong, but I think it's like 10-plus uh, years old, right? 2004 and, is when it launched. Or 2004. All right. So yeah. yeah okay. So it's it's 10. 2014. And and I mean I, I've read interviews with the developers where they're saying a lot of people always ask us, hey, bring some of the old stuff back, and they say, hey, listen, we can't do that. Technology evolves. When we launched this game back then, we had a we had a certain code base. We have had to iter uh, iterate and evolve that. And some of those things, as much as we would love to bring them back, are not compatible. And furthermore, not feasible too to tr the to basically like re-edit or recode all that shit. Exactly. You just took the words out of my mouth. Some of them have said, "Hey, listen, we t could we do it? Of course, yeah, we could port that stuff over, but the time and resources that would go into doing that would not pay off." All right. No. No, I I understand that. Um, it's just the realities of game development. I mean, it's just what it is. I mean, yeah, it I, is. I, I think that one thing that I would love to to Bungie to not do in the next game, uh, when it comes to lore, don't make it our RNG, please. Just 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 make us do a specific storyline and quest, and after after the storyline, the the lore book drops, and that's it. I don't have just to go like, back do and re this. release the game from E3. So many pings, yeah. As well. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad that you that you just mentioned that particular example. So what Marlon is referring to is that there's some pretty cool lore. Um, pages that amount to like a paragraph or a course or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't. Exactly I don't. What you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know how many pages of these things are, but it's it's gated behind RNG. Yeah. Now, this is one particular example where I feel strongly saying that's not an Activision decision. That's, that's a, a Bungie, Bungie decision. decision, and that's <laughs> stupid. And that's a stupid decision. I'm sorry. It, it it's it. I know it's supposed to make it so like oh, you're supposed to replay the mission over and over again until. <laughs> You get the hey. entire like package, but that doesn't make it 
fun. That just gives you a oh shut up. You tell him. <laughs> like, Dalton's kid's like, fix this, fix this now. <laughs> but He's mad because like, I won't cer- give him my cer- Nintendo Switch games. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a splitting image of his dad. Simple as that. So. Uh, but there's certain things that Bungie does to, to increase the playability, quote unquote, that just like boggles the mind thinking like who thought that this was a good idea. A good example, like when the puzzle for the uh, Borgesia Forge came out, people were spending 24 hours trying to get this thing opened up. And then they realized, oh, shit. Uh, there was a specific line of code that we forgot to put back into this thing so we couldn't open it for you guys. We're sorry. Like, that's on you guys. That's not on Activision. That's on you. Okay. It, it's certain things that I don't want to see happening again in Destiny 3. I mean, the... the, the... I mean, it's if you're going to... the first game, too, where they fucking hit everything behind Grimoire cards. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a cop-out when it comes to story. Like... I... I don't mind the Grimoire cards. The Grimoire cards, I had no problem with that as long as I could see it on my phone. But the problem that I had was that there was nothing in game. <laughs> it was like the most vanilla thing you can do. And that's actually what sold me on Anthem. Oh, I read something on Anthem I, I, earlier, I, I, and I can't remember what it was, but I don't want to get into that right now. But... This, this is coming from a guy that been stuck with this game for so long that there are certain things that Activision I will blame on them for, for ruining things but there are some certain situations that have made me go Bungie what made you think that this was a good idea like what in the process of the game developing devs looking at you you talking to the to the to the developers from both sides because I'm pretty sure there was a couple of teams working on different on different things at different times like that just make me go like, what you guys thought this was right, like, and like, I don't know if Gustavo can, can, can validate this for me, but didn't you find it odd that for certain missions there was no character that like the correlation between the characters and the missions might no make no sense whatsoever? Yeah, but I, I just again sticking back to the Activision Bungie thing. I don't, I don't. That doesn't. That's not like Activision thing. I think they did a meddle in that way. I think the way they no. meddled in was ba- mainly, hey, we need to monetize this game, and you do whatever you need to do lore wise to make this Eververse Tess Everest lady fit, yeah. right? Right. So just just going, just trying to go back to that, not not try to get into the nitty gritty of of the game. No, um, I agree. And just real quick, going back, I think there was a red herring, and I just remembered it right now, and I'm actually looking at article. I think I sent it on our, our on on our own chat. Wait, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was there was that that article that Schreier wrote, like right before the year ended, about um, Activision downsizing, and how the financial services department was starting sort of like to take control, and they were doing some cost cutting measures, and they were uh, giving people pay packages to retire. Do you guys remember that at all? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. That was something, and I actually I, I wrote about this in the Discord. I never once thought that that was something that would affect Bungie, because I was just so naive. But, it, but I should have thought I was like, yeah. these are the first ones it'll affect, because they're not in house. No. Nope, right? they, yeah, they're just publishing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, that was, that like was another the, thing. The, the first thing you're gonna cut when you're gonna downsize in a company. So yeah, this actually this don't... actually now that you mention it, I completely forgot about that article. This doesn't. This makes perfect sense now. Yeah. This like, yeah. This this makes one hundred percent sense. You put yeah. one and one together, and you're like, yo. Yeah. yeah. That that that. I what completely happened. forgot about that article. Honestly, like I read it, and then. I think I, I mentioned it. I mentioned it on the Discord. I think when the news broke on Thursday, like late at night when I got home, that I was able to think about it. But I just yeah. remembered it now. I just looked up the article. That's yeah. Crazy. It's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, makes <no laughs> sense. It, it it makes you think like. So like bits and pieces of how all this went down, you know, and it makes you go like, what is the timeline for like, oh, so that's what happened. Like, oh, so it looks the, the it looks from the from the outside looking in, it looks very amicable. It looks like, oh no, that there must have been some like real like like is like bad like meetings and stuff like that. Like, can you imagine? I'm pretty sure it was been, like, some oh, tense moments, but I don't know. I w- I would like to think that it was like 
I mean, they, they seem congratulatory in their tone on the piece. It, it doesn't seem mean or. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there was some tension. I'm not saying that there wasn't. I'm not trying to downplay. That. Oh, absolutely. I, I would have loved being a kid. I would have loved being a fly. You on said that kid. Anyway, cause... <laughs> I think I said kid. Uh... I would have loved being a fly on that meeting when he says, guys, thank you for everything, but we're done. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're done, but we're moving on. Thank you for Basically, all the Basically, the question I think we have to ask is, like, can Bungie pull this off alone? I, I don't think they can do it alone, but I, I agree yeah, with Yeah, they'll have to have some type think. of investors, but I, I think moving forward, we're, it's going to be actually interesting to talk about Bungie again and Destiny as a whole. Mm-hmm. I, it, it'd be curious to see what kind of comes out of this and I think that's yeah. what's yeah. going to be the most fun part of it to watch <laughs> yeah the baby yeah. agrees yeah. damn right the, the baby agrees. To sleep. <laughs> like, that's the a baby, great like, that's I'm a great talking about destiny I'm so that's fucking a great end cap it. right there so <laughs> no, I, but yeah I think like they've got that 100 million from that like that other company from China Korean, I can't remember their name yeah, um, yeah thank you um, so that's a good start, I think, because like you said, at the time, I, I believe at the time Destiny 1 came out, I don't know any st- stats on Destiny 2, but like when Destiny 1 came out, it was like the most expensive game to make or something yeah. at the time. At the time, yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. the fastest selling IP at the time too, new IP, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it was so, about 500 million that they spent on it, I think. Yeah, so yeah, uh, you look at that 100 million that they got. Invest, that's a great start, but it's it's peanuts at this point. You know what I mean? They they, they drop Bungie. The I don't I don't think I don't think Bungie has five hundred million laying around that they can just blow. So it's gonna be interesting yeah. to see to see where they pull this from and how they how they handle this. I'll tell you this though. There's a couple. Of, I just realized something. You know now. Remember that comic book that we got for Forsaken for uh, uh, Curse of Osiris? Yes. Like Bungie can do that now. But you don't have, doesn't have to worry about Activision and that. Transmedia, like, great. So so they can do that. They can, <laughs> they can they can do like comic books. They can do like TV shows. Like they don't have to worry about uh, just keeping it as a video game. You know, they can build the brand into something much more than that. So I I I, I wouldn't mind saying that. Right. We'll Fair see. Enough. We'll see where it goes. I think. Uh... I don't know. I, I I think we're all rooting for Bungie at this point. Yeah. 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 But I, I am definitely. I'm definitely nervous. Like I'm actually nervous for them too, because that's a huge loss. I mean, act, like Activision spends money. Mm-hmm. They yeah. got money. Nobody counts money like they do. And yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, think about it. When they when they merged with Blizzard, I was yeah. like, what? How much the fucking fuck? money they had. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ! I was like, well, "How much money do you guys have to be able to pull this off?" Like, damn. So, yeah. it, it's, but it's... I think I think like I said, moving forward, it's going to be really interesting to uh, to figure out and to watch. So, uh, so well, basically, that's... I'll be buying Destiny Three, whatever it's called. Just basically, I'm going to support Bungie because I uh, yeah. I'll buy. The moving game. forward, I was I, I I think Dalton and I honestly were fairly tapped out. Dalton even more than I than me. So, I'll be like this. Yeah, I'm, so, I think, moving I forward, think I do want to. I'm definitely going to support Bungie. I think Destiny yeah. Two left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Especially um, your one. Especially yes. your one. I I was among those people. I have since returned. I I think I can speak from both sides, saying, hey, they have improved upon it. It's a great game now. But I can totally see where Jeff and Dalton are coming from because first impressions are are, are very important, yeah. and and they shit the bed, and it, it's sort of unfair to them to just you know to just write Destiny two write away. Them off, yeah. But yeah. but but you guys do have a point in terms of hey listen you should have got it right the first time considering we gave you so many chances with Destiny one. Right. right? Yeah. So I, I I totally understand that point of view. But yeah, it's I mean, I'm, I'm really definitely going to support them. I returned for a little bit in December there. I mean, I've since stopped playing, but I uh, had some other shit I wanted to play. So it's not that I stopped playing because I wasn't enjoying it. Right. Same I stopped here. playing because I don't have friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this guy. 
But uh, but real quick, but yeah. do we want to do we want to talk about a little bit of Anthem real quick before we close out? Um, I think we yeah, can save that for. I was I think we can save it for next week. But if you guys want to, I'm I'm not gonna deny it. I'll see about that because um, we talk. I'm sure more shit will come out next week about it too, and then and then the All week right, after that, we'll have about a, a demo. month out. Yeah, it's going to be a rolling thing. Yeah, it'll cuz they they drip feeding us content like they usually do before the and game rolls out. And then in like in like 2 weeks we'll we'll have all have actually gotten our hands on it for the uh, VIP demo. Yes, sir. Yep. And honestly what sold me on uh like cuz I told you guys I wasn't going to get it day one. I wasn't going to get it day one. Yeah, what what did <laughs> sell you on it? I was reading this like little article and there was the one side steel by... Yeah, well that too. That I was reading this article the other day, and there's this one sentence in it that stood out, and it said, uh, like, and I actually highlighted the sentence and put it in my little note. I don't have the whole article, but it says, while Anthem has shades of Bungie's destiny, Bioware is looking to differentiate Anthem by having an even stronger focus on story. And I was like, all right, cool, sold. <laughs> right there, that one sentence. Basically, and speaking speaking to what you brought up today regarding that seven minute four Tarsus video, I sort of gave it shit at the beginning for hey we're not going to be able to be with our friends, but in essence that is a different thing. Like hey they have decided hey we're not going to have you with other people, and maybe that serves a story. Maybe it's yeah. it's easier to tell a story when you're just telling it to one player as opposed to multiple players in in one location. Yeah, and I think uh, I I was reading somewhere maybe maybe I maybe I am making this up I don't know. I'm, I've been sick for the last week, but uh, <laughs> he's um, delusional, fellas. <laughs> delusional. Yeah. I was reading somewhere that pretty much everything is going to be co-op, though. Kind of like, kind of like Destiny is. Like you can play everything co-op, pretty much. I've heard that this game's going to be pretty much yeah. the same way. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Everything is co-op. Everything is. Everything oh, is and it's making itself other. And there will be raids. That's something that they haven't spoken about. But I read, I read an article. Um, I think it was from Games Radar. I read it this morning. There, there will be raids. They just won't be ready at launch. So the strongholds that they've been talking about are not raids. Those are like strikes, if you want to yep. relate it to Destiny. It's like strikes. So the fact that they will have raids, I was like, oh, man, that is sweet. Because Division 1 never had any raids. They just had those incursions, which were like mini raids, like mini ra yeah. in, be in between a raid and a strike kind of. But the yeah. fact that Anthem will have raids, like a proper raid, I'm hella excited about that. How they say how is, many players are? Is the EA publishing this? EA is publishing it. Yeah, they own they own Bioware. Uh, that's what I thought. That's but they I have thought. said. But they have said. And although and although again, we can look at Destiny by example because Tess Everest wasn't a thing at the beginning. They have said they will only sell cosmetics. Oh, oh yeah. they have oh, said. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. That, that's that's gonna be well. I don't mind. Uh, microtransactions as much as some people do i just don't like it when you cannot earn it in game i do don't it. like honestly what i don't like is the fact that like you can spend real money in destiny for example and you get those engrams you can't buy the shit you want so you have to like hope you get it in one of those roles which sucks Yep. And you spend money and you're not even guaranteed to get the shit you want. And at the beginning of Destiny 2, they throttled how much XP you got, which oh, funneled you yep. to, which pressured you, and they did it. They did it slyly. It was a they sneaky, got caught. shysty way, and they got caught. So yeah. Yeah, and that's where that's what left the the bad taste in my mouth. And I've brought it up several times when we get into our little debates. So here's the <laughs> thing, though. So Bungie fixed that. I, I don't. Well, I wouldn't say they fixed it, but they tried to mitigate. Uh, that with the prismatic uh, mattresses uh, in Destiny 2, where now every week there's like, well, I want to say maybe about 10 items or something like that that you can have a chance of getting it because of using the prismatic mattresses, and it can be a chance of one of the, the things from the um, anger rounds. Funny thing about that is that Justin didn't know about this, so he spent 20 bucks buying engrams as opposed to actually going for the prismatic mattresses, which is basically allowing you to buy what you want. I knew you were going to say this. I knew as soon as we started, I was like, Marla's going to touch this story. I knew it. And, and <laughs> yeah, he spent, he spent 30 bucks on engrams, and I go, Justin, what are you doing? I wanted to get the, 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 the sparrow. Yeah, but the sparrow is in the prismatic mattresses. You could have got it. You could have got it with 20 bucks or less. What? You lie. 
no. <laughs> he stopped Stop what he was doing. He went back to the tower and spent an additional 30 bucks. Okay. I was like, what are you doing with your fucking life, bro? Like, like that's the thing, you know? Like, some people, like, and, and, and Bungie gets people like this all the time. Okay. <laughs> It, and and, and EA Cup gets people like this every single time, where it's it's not a hundred percent like you know transparent on how you do go about these things. You know, they always make it so like, yeah, you could have done it, but but there was another way. We didn't, we didn't tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, and for me, that's one thing that I hope they can fix in the next in the next thing. A little bit more transparency when it comes to microtransactions. I mean, EA is not gonna change their way. They love it. They love making money of this. You know, they they, they love throttling stuff. So that's one thing that I hope Bungie doesn't get into. I mean, and I hope that even though Anthem will have microtransactions and like just that was it, and they only gonna be, you know, like cosmetics, cosmetic, cosmetics and stuff like that. At least make them good, okay? Make them decent. <laughs> Don't, don't don't make me spend five bucks on getting a crappy ass shit that nobody cares and, not, and I'm not even gonna use. Okay, that's if that's my point when it comes to microtransactions. If you're gonna make them, make them in a way that they are that it makes you feel proud that you bought them. It makes you feel that your purchase was you know uh, validated. Validated. Yeah. Not not like oh I spent five bucks and I didn't get what I wanted and, and oh now I have just some crappy ass emo that nobody cares about it'll no. just be like a bunch of like elaborate suits and shit exosuits and all that I'm sure um, yeah uh, but yeah, that's, but, um, yeah. Sorry, do you guys have anything else you want to touch on tonight you have been wanting to wrap this up for the past 30 minutes <laughs> Like, you're fine. Please, just leave. I was like, I got a little story for you guys. Just no, to be, to be perfectly, to be perfectly honest, I'm extremely exhausted. So I was letting you guys run with it. So it's like, yeah, I, think... I just want to go back and play. Oh, I, I want to go to sleep. Yeah, I was, I'm gonna go. The, I'm gonna go the fuck to bed. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, yeah. So am I. Actually, I was gonna ask you, uh, Jeff. Are you gonna play the DLC for it? Oh, you already play it. For what? This is great Odyssey. Uh, yeah, actually, I've played. I started playing a little bit of the first pack, and then I've uh, I played. They have like a bonus, like bonus missions that they added that was in. Beast or something like that. Yeah, it's like the patch. The pat. They patched in missions, and then the actual episodes are the purchasable items. Second one's coming right. out tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, yeah, second one comes out tomorrow. Can't wait for so, Assassin's yeah. Creed Three. Yeah, I was gonna say they're redoing Assassin's Creed Three. I'll be that. That's part of the season pass. So. Oh, nice. That's right, cool. And I've got the season pass. Cause I bought the the gold edition with the steel book and shit. So. You and your steel book. So Dalton, I swear to God. If you, when you get a chance, you I know I, I wouldn't recommend that you play it right away because you literally just finished Odyssey, dude. But you got to play Origins later on this year. You oh, I'm play going Origins. to. I, I actually I already bought it. You saw. Yeah. yeah during the I during saw. like the the summer lull, you should play Origins. That's why I haven't started it yet because I did not like I didn't want to run the risk of like having played Odyssey and then just going immediately into it and getting burnt out. So I just haven't like started it yet because I I don't want to do that to myself. So. Yeah, fair so I'm, I'm gonna finish it. But yeah, that's fair. all I got. I'm good on everything else. All right. Well, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at Average Gaming Seventeen. I'm on Twitter at JB underscore AEG. Dalton. No. Go ahead. Guys. Don't don't follow you on don't follow you on Twitter. No. Okay. <laughs> Goose. Don't follow me on Twitter too. Fuck. Okay. Everybody. Damn guys, <laughs> Marlon. Uh, you can follow me at uh, White Sun underscore A E G. Thank you. Uh, Lord Almighty, these guys are in. I don't really want. I don't want followers on my personal. I don't want account. followers. I don't want people to bother me. I just want to be stuck in my own way, to my own little. Boy. Dude, I've had like this. I've had like this rash of people just following me, like these fake bots, like Jenny twenty two ninety three forty four, Marie twenty five ninety six eighty seven. I'm like, what the fuck. <laughs> 
These are inflated numbers. I was like happy. I was like, yeah, I'm over 400. I'm looking through my account. I'm like, there's like over 15 of these fake accounts. This is BS. <laughs> oh my god. Look. Anyway. That's it. Go ahead. Say it. Say it, Marlon. Say oh, no, it. No. I was just gonna say, like Gustavo, if you can make it to 50 platinum trophies by the end of the year, I'll give you something special. Just, 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 uh, just see if you can do it. Okay. You need to do what? 15. 13. I'm, I'm, I'm done for it. 13, yeah, so 13. That. Yeah. That's not bad. 13, 13 is doable. I did it last year. Right. But, all right. Have a good night and a good week, everybody. And we will see <laughs> you next week with another episode of the AEG Show.